does look good. All right. Welcome to Camaraderie, where I try to figure out old cameras and all the things involved with them. And today, I don't need a hat. That's great. It's a, it's a good, well, you know, I need a trim. Who cares? In the video today, I'm going to be taking a look at how the different variables in the film development process affect the outcome, how it affects the negative itself. Um, I've narrowed it down to three different variables that I want to take a look at um, and just kind of see what happens. To do this, I figured out that I need seven rolls of film and I've already got those rolled up and they're not full 24 or 36 exposure rolls. It's about 10 uh, frames in each roll. Uh, just so that way I don't have to waste a ton of film on this. And I was able to do that thanks to my handy dandy Watson 100 bulk loader, my reloadable film cassettes, and I'm going to be shooting with my Pentax ME Super. It's all coming together. It's almost like I planned this, but I, I, it just works out. So seven rolls. One roll is going to be my control. My con- haha, <laughs> my control. That's just where I'm going to develop everything as I normally do my standard processing um, just to get a baseline, just to see how that looks and then we can compare and contrast how the other rolls turn out. I'm going to have two rolls dedicated to temperature. I'm going to be doing three degrees higher uh, for the, the development chemicals are going to be three degrees hotter. This is three degrees Celsius. Um, it's just easier to do Celsius uh, with black and white. Three degrees hotter, one roll is going to be three degrees cooler, and then we're going to move on to um, the amount of time that the film spins in the chemical. I'm going to put the film in the chemicals, um, in the development chemical for three, no, two minutes longer, and then I'm going to have one roll that's done two minutes shorter. And last but not least, we've got agitation. Um, it's a crucial part of, or a standard part of the development process, uh, just to kind of mix things up and keep it all fresh and everything. And that is supposed to control grain size and noticeability. So I'm going to do uh, one roll with half the amount of agitation and one roll with twice the amount of agitation. So yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see what happens because I haven't been able to find any thing like this on the internet. Um, just kind of showing, seeing, you know, what happens when you start messing with the process. Maybe I haven't looked hard enough, I don't know, but it seems like something fun to do anyways. So I'm going to set up the shot and then go through all of the, um, I'm going to get everything developed and all that and I'm not going to bore you with any of those shots just because I want to it's going to take hours, so I'm just going to kind of see you guys on the other side of this after everything is already processed and put in the scanner, and then, uh, yeah, we'll take a look and see what happens. All right, so I've got everything developed and scanned and put it into the computer, um, loaded into Lightroom and all that. Uh, first thing I want to just make very clear up front is that I did have to do some uh, slight editing is mostly uh, for removing watermarks from the negatives. I forgot that I ran out of uh, photo flow in my whatever I developed before this. I think it was uh, for the Sun Pet uh, video. Um, that was my last bit of uh, photo flow, which just makes it easier for everything to dry cleanly and smoothly and not have any watermarks or anything. Uh, as an example of what I'm talking about right here. Yeah. So you see all these little like spots and you know, there's a little dried water right there and right there and, um, some dust just from uh, the room that it was in while it was drying. Um, so yeah, this is the, this is the only editing I've done to these photos, just so we can actually um, see 
what the what the images actually look like um, just as they are and not with any contrast or level adjustments or anything done. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. All right. So here's the um, just the base picture standard development. Um, it's uh, it's a picture. It's, uh, not not much to it. I wanted to get uh, something that would hopefully have a decent bit of contrast uh, going, just so I can see uh, how. Yeah, I mean that that's pretty much the big variable that comes into play in developing is the contrast, and I just wanted to get a baseline uh, developed to my standard process. And uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look. This is the second picture right here, or the second second process uh, with the higher temperature. Got uh, a little bit brighter whites, a little bit of um, darker darks, uh, basically just more contrast. We're looking at the histogram right here. Um, you can see that in the first picture I have already some just about absolute blacks and um, yeah, some mid-tones right here and basically with the higher temperature it kind of moves it up towards um towards the highlights it's um not exactly a super contrasty picture i don't have any absolute whites in here um but it is getting pretty close right there so um of course yeah i mean i'm pretty much missing highlights in this picture, but hey, we should still be able to get the point. But yeah, going from the first roll to the second roll, you can see it kind of pushes everything towards the more contrasty side of things. And from here to the uh, third development, which was um, rather than three degrees higher, we went three degrees cooler um, in, in the development chemical. And that kind of looks like this. So I mean, it kind of looks like it. It does look like it. That's exactly what it is. So you can tell again uh, from the histogram, it's kind of pushing everything back down towards uh, less defined, less contrast uh, look. And we compare it to the original image or the standard process image right here. Um, we just kind of go back and forth. Not not a huge difference, but you can tell that it is a little bit uh, a little bit darker, a little bit flatter, uh, not not as punchy highlights, and you can actually start to see um, a little bit of definition right there between the shadow on the wall and then uh, the black board that I had it uh, setting on sitting on. So after developing for temperature, I wanted to see what would happen if I just uh, messed with the time, the amount of time that uh, the film was left in the development chemicals. And um, first off, I put it, I left it in the development chemicals for I think two minutes longer than my standard, and that produces quite a bit of uh, contrast. So we can go from here to here. And this is what's called push processing. Um, it's just literally just leaving the film in the development chemicals for a little bit longer. Uh, of course, you know, you can see the histogram being pushed up a little bit more, kind of raises the highlights a little bit, uh, a little bit more than even the temperature does. Uh, this is the higher temperature right here. This is the longer development time. I just kind of cycle back and forth between those. And yeah, you can, mostly looking at the wall, you can see that the, um, Mid-tones have been pushed up a little bit. If you look along right here, you can kind of see that the um, the whites have been pushed up a little bit. So that kind of gives a little bit, a little bit extra contrast um, to the image. So from going from two minutes uh, longer in the development chemicals to now we've got two minutes shorter than standard time. And as you can see, this produces a really, really flat. Um, image right here. Everything's just kind of crushed down. Uh, not a lot of whites. It's mostly all grays. There's not there's hardly anything in the way of highlights. And now for the last two developments that I did, I wanted to find out how agitation 
affected grain size and noticeability. Now, these are ran into a little bit of an issue. I didn't think about this before I set this experiment up. Um, so here's with half agitation and here's with uh, twice the amount of agitation uh, compared to standard processing. The thing I did not think about is that um, these are digitized images. Uh, yes, they're shot on film, developed and um, everything, but they are scanned in and turned into digital images. So that means I can't really investigate the grain size uh, and structure just because um, it all gets turned into pixels and it it's just like it's I'm sure it's there but it's kind of can't really see a big difference in grain size and structure I do have a um, grain focuser uh, which is used when you're using an enlarger and it uh, helps you like focus the image exactly and you can kind of I can I can tell a difference between the two um, when I'm looking through that but that is incredibly hard to capture because um, it's just a super super small circle that you're looking through and it's it focuses or that you can you can see the focus it's I don't have like I, I would need specialized equipment to um, to look at the uh, to be able to show the grain difference bet uh, between the two to you guys. Um, and this is where I need, I realized that if I wanted to do this part, the grain structure part properly, I would need a, uh, like a light box and a magnifying loop, something I'm working towards. But so unfortunately these two didn't quite find out what, um, what I was hoping to, I suppose. So for the rest of them, there are marked differences. The biggest difference in contrast uh, that you get is going to come from leaving the film in the chemicals for longer. Um, that's, that's really all there is to it. And then this is some contrast, uh, but not as, as much. Um, this is going to be from your higher temperature, your hotter temperature. And if you want to flatten out your image, uh, flatten out your negative, make it a little bit less contrasty, you can either um, put the development chemicals down um, temperature-wise, or you can just leave it in there for a shorter amount of time. And I kind of like, it, it does look like the negatives are more affected by the amount of time that they're in the development chemicals as opposed to the temperature of the chemicals. And um, now this, this I, I do want to say this is entirely uh, black and white focused. The when you're developing color, it, uh, it it's a lot less forgiving. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm focusing on uh, on uh, black and white here. It's um, yeah, you just have a lot of leeway in your development process here with uh when you're shooting with black and white and uh yeah that's uh that's pretty much it i'm a little bit bummed that i couldn't really show you guys the difference in grain structure and grain size um but you know you live and you learn and it's uh something i didn't know before or didn't think about i kind of knew if i'd thought about it for a second i would have um realized that i would need like a, a light box and a magnifying loop to really show you guys the difference in um, grain size and structure. And that's pretty much it. Um, I've been curious about this stuff for a while and I just wanted to figure it out for myself rather than trying to sift through a bunch of forums and everything online and, and getting people's different anecdotal evidence for what does what and how everything affects everything else. Um, so yeah, I figured it, you know, take y'all with me through the process and, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around. If you did like this video, then you should like it. There's a little like button. 
you like it, you like it. If you don't, I mean, you can press the dislike button if you want to, but I imagine you probably wouldn't have gotten this far in the video if you didn't like the, the video. So, um, yeah, if you want to see more of this kind of content, let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, if you just want to see what I get into next, hit the subscribe button and, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you. Or I'll, I'll be looking through the lens through a monitor at you again at some point in the future.